Buying on credit. We do it by the millions, and those charges can really add up. But you can save money by lowering your interest rate. Our engineer Bob Fulmer did. The interest rate on his credit card was 17.9 percent. We coached him and then okay. had him call his credit card uh, company. Gotten, over the last couple of months, I've gotten several um, ads in the mail from other credit card companies offering me like 5 percent, 6 percent. Within five minutes, the company was offering him a lower rate, but with an $18 annual fee, Bob kept negotiating. Well, would you be able to exempt me or could ch check with somebody to see if I could still be exempt from that fee? That tactic didn't work, but in the end, Bob ended up lowering his credit rate from 17.9 percent to 12 percent. Yes, I was skeptical, and the thing of it is that uh, a lot of times you get paperwork from a bank or you get advertisements, you don't pay any attention to them. I've been a customer of yours for a while now. Intern Janine Lassant, a King's College student, called her credit card company. Six percent. And I was wondering if there was anything you could do for me. Simple question, and the answer was yes. The company dropped Janine's rate from 19.9 percent to 17.9 percent, which will bring a welcome savings. I think in the long run it will, because if I, now if, if I know I have a balance carrying over, at least I know it's at least two percent. It's better than that two percent increase. Healthbeat reporter Diana Pena's decrease was more dramatic, from 17.65 percent to 12.15 percent, with a $20 fee. I called them up and I said I've been getting offers from other credit card companies much lower when it came to the interest rate and I wanted mine lowered here and they did. They changed it for me and I was really surprised. I'm Donna Crilly for Eyewitness News Sunrise. Italy kilowatt hours. Ham radio operators are pitching a tent and setting up shop in the great outdoors at Moon Lake Park this weekend. It's more than a summer getaway, it's a drill. Practicing for a day when maybe electricity isn't available, when they're forced from their homes and still needed in an emergency. Such a day did happen during the flood 30 years ago. In 72, uh, they did not have emergency power, like telephones were out, power was out, things like that. Hands were able to, to uh, provide communications. People want to know if the people back home are all right. And I mean, there was people trying to get messages through uh, to get supplies in, things like that. This is called Field Day, a yearly test of amateur radio operators to see if they can still communicate in less than ideal conditions. This group, Murgus Amateur, is our local group responsible for communication if something should happen to the power plant in Berwick. Well, this exercise is, sh is showing a couple things. Uh, one, how we would react in emergency conditions. Of course, we'll be running a generator uh, for this exercise tomorrow and Sunday. And it also shows the FCC that the ham radio is still an important part of America today. Everything needed to begin communicating to someone in Great Britain took less than 45 minutes. Hammers like Bob Michaels has been on his radio almost every night since 1977. At, at the present time, I, I think I got postcards from about 300 different countries. And Michael says despite advances made in technology over the years, ham radio is the only thing we can count on when emergency strikes. Even in, in today's world with, with cell telephones, you know, the regular landline telephones are going to be out. Everybody's going to pick up their cell telephone. It's not going to work. Field Day has been taking place in the United States and Canada since 1933. Tomorrow, about 30 ham operators will be here participating, making contact with nearly 30,000 nationwide. At Moon Lake Park, Cecily Mayo, 28 News.